Hello to viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about electrocoagulation and oxidation or Indra waters. So let's dive deep into it. So what exactly is the need? Well, need is that uh, it's not that we do not have fresh water. It's just that we are taking fresh water, converting it into dirty H2O and fast doing it faster than nature can recycle because yes, nature will recycle 100% of the water. Water will uh, evaporate, go to upper, uh, go to clouds and rain it auto recycling uh, problem is that we are doing it bit too fast so nature cannot cleanse that system fast enough so there is a serious issue now if you take water waste from our civilization does not matter whether it's industry like uh, uh, some industries or uh, does not matter it's like pharmaceutical uh, households hospitals whatever have you civilization output yeah if we do not treat that water and we directly dump that into river bodies or ocean or anything like that yeah it's gonna end is going to end life in those water bodies meaning if we have something keep continuing doing like this it will end basically it will sterilize the waterways consequence of that is that uh, once you have that sort of uh, <coughs> sterilization the biological cleansing process gets compromised so uh, you first had reduced capacity then you will have zero capacity so water will not be recycled as efficiently as it was being recycled so there is a very serious uh, compounding error we must take care of our wastewater otherwise not only we're gonna have a very serious issue with uh, wildlife we also gonna have a very serious issue that we no longer have water so it's a very serious thing now why we are not solving it if we have the tools for it well it's not cost effective let that be very clear um, in early uh, you know 1980s and 1990s European Union and America both of them had a lot of big clothing industry they learned the hard way that uh, the dye output of those puppies are lethal uh, meaning environmental agencies were built regulations were created and it was strictly enforced consequences uh, basically the profit margin uh, decreased of all the clothing companies so they directly jumped to China now in China China was like on paper they have uh, all the regulations and all that but they do not uh, actually deploy it and when China uh, basically became host hostile for the world market they jumped to Bangladesh it's like wait a minute why they are not coming to India yeah we have we have treatment for this uh, like do, do we do 100% better job he'll know but uh, do we do our best to make sure that this poison directly does not end up in our rivers yeah we are trying our best so you do understand that fundamentally makes it expensive now is it very expensive no but like uh, you are talking about companies that will like literally use uh, you know um, their proprietary connector simply because uh, going to USB-C will reduce few million dollars out of a few trillion dollar company. So you do understand like for few cents per clothing itself uh, they were like yeah we are going to Bangladesh. So fundamentally we must find a way to handle this sort of thing for low enough cost. Now uh, could this cost be low enough uh, compared to not treating it? Hell no physics does not allow it. But if it can be low enough where let's say India is uh, takes care of it efficiently enough where it could be like hey instead of exporting clothes whatever clothes that we are importing we no longer import it and everything is made household wise and we no longer have to worry about poisonous water. That's, that's a good desirable thing and same goes with other industries also I'm talking about clothing because this was like very uh, under the radar kind of industry we talk about heavy metals big chemical plants and all that but clothing industry is like uh, under the water kind of scenario poisonous so we must handle industrial pollutant water otherwise it has cascading failure and we will run out of water not because there is not enough water simply because we are we will not have enough clean water so there is a tangible need of sorting water before it gets too dirty so what are the tools that we have? Well, tool-wise, uh, electricity is a very powerful tool. Now, there are many ways of sorting uh, chemical waste and stuff that is in the water. However, many of them require consumption of something that is very hard to replace. For example, you can filter a water in a very great degree if you have activated charcoal. But here's the that activated charcoal will no longer be activated once you use it up so you have it becomes a consumable item it's difficult same goes with many other processes where you're like what if you put chlorine okay awesome but now you have a chlorine consumption so you get the point like there are many processes that will solve your water problem but they consume something we do not want to consume anything thankfully electricity solves that problem it's just uh, for example how do you sterilize the water you put ultraviolet in there how do you sterilize some a bit of a heavy toxin you put ozone there how do you get that you just put electricity so that's the easiest way that's what we want at the other end water electricity clean water if that can be done we will do it so electricity is a very powerful tool that allows us to cleanse the water now uh, 
biggest benefit is no chemical need. Now, like, what, are, what about the electrical cost? Trust me, compared to the chemical cost, it's uh, free. Because again, uh, electricity is getting cheaper and cheaper simply because of the solar on uh, solar and wind and things of that nature. So electrocoagulation is the first tool. So you put electrodes, you put DC current, be mindful, DC current into it and that will remove all the suspended solid. I'm like how? Well, here's the deal. Whenever you're talking about dissolving something, what are you doing? Right? Like you put salt, salt disappears. So what actually happened to the salt? Salt broke down into its charged particles and uh, dissipated. Now, if you force feed its charge from electrical sources, you are coagulating it again. Basically, I do not know what you call invert of dissolving. So you coagulate it out of the solution. So basically, you are undoing what they were chemically doing it. And that's the best explanation I could give you guys. Like I looked, I studied all the papers. It was like way too complex because be mindful for every chemistry, it's different. So it does remove suspended solid meaning you can have stuff and it's like go away stuff Ta -da. it's not removing it it's just uh, settling it out it's uh, basically re uh, removing the water's ability to hold stuff in so it removes uh, you know suspended solid that's good heavy metals this is a very serious issue for india right now we have way too much mercury cadmium things of that nature in our water supply this puppy can handle that like no probably is problem certain organics and pathogens this also uh, takes care of those puppies however those are bit uh, pathogens specifically is kind of easy that's why we invented ultraviolet so this will take care of some very nasty puppies and it can take sewage water and make it like actual water now, be mindful, what about the sludge and all that? Because it has physically deconstructed them, they made very high toxicity to mild annoyances. Now, electro-oxidation, what is happening here? Well, it's also electrolysis, exactly same way you have electrolysis in your uh, lead acid batteries. So that oxidation, you have fresh oxygen there. What is fresh oxygen? Very, very reactive. So it disintegrates organic compounds, basically carbon-based compounds. It disintegrates them on a fundamental chemical level. So you have long chemical chain, it's like yeet, yeet. So it keeps chopping them into smaller ones and this is compulsory for pharmaceutical industry because if you know about pharmaceutical industry, you must have heard this term forever chemicals. Now it's a whole category of chemicals that are so brutal, so like they're kind of inert to us, that's why it is used but they have a problem that you ingest the medicines, it goes through you, goes through your whole kidneys, comes out intact. There is no biological formula, to it. it's basically a molecular version of plastic. It is forever chemical and we cannot have this in like you know in the environment because large enough concentration yeah it will start to have an effect so fundamentally we have to solve it this breaks it down it's like bro i got this like this uh, forever chemicals are so brutal even in ro it has hard time to removing it this breaks it down it's like no so it's very desirable and uh, industrial chemicals also like dyes and all that these two core principles of electrocoagulation and electrooxidation allows you to filter surprisingly large amount of it. It's like it's a very wide net. Now, of course, you're not supposed to put this sort of water. You're supposed to put at least filter water. I filter as in like sandbox kind of filtering. You're not supposed to have solid waste going there. Uh, but once you have like, you know, dirty water, it can take care of surprisingly large amount of things. And be mindful, these are the two tools. There is another tool known as normal electrolysis. That will also take care of uh, sterilizing the water and uh, removing some sort Salts, some specific salts and it also allows you to handle the T TDH pH level also so just using electricity we can do a lot of things now this is not a new science this is a common science tool we have been using it in uh, large-scale water treatment but there lies the problem so Indra Water, the company that I got the luxury to do a direct interview, uh, video linked down below, uh, they had a booth and I had an interview of them. So they took the core technology, which is known, time-tested, verified, EC and ED technologies, and they made it into a compact module. Now what they are uh, striving for, it's rather than having everybody in the city dumping their garbage into one central location, and then central location trying to sort it out, is it what if you got directly fire missiles at the source, meaning you have a large apartment complex, you sort water right there you have a clothing industry that factory itself you sort the water right there so you have pharmaceutical factories solve the water right there rather than uh, you know uh, wasting it or mixing it sorting that sort of water. that's why they are focusing specifically on reducing the scale and once you reduce the scale you fundamentally make it cheaper fundamentally so that is the core focus on reducing cost. Everything that we have talked about in terms of electrical uh, systems, you can buy the power supply, you can buy the membranes, you can buy, like everything that you need is just buy it. You just have to assemble it wisely. So this is what they have done. This is their special sauce. So this tool 
you can just buy it here's deal what nobody has done so far before them is like hey what if we take all of it combined in a smart way where we are focusing on reducing cost so it works and uh, the core treatment is decentralize it do not let it mix with anything else because it's super easy this treatment plant will work quite effectively if all you have is a water that is contaminated with one thing super easy super effective but if you mix it with other things even it uh, benign things like uh, as a soap or urine it will destruct so that's why there's fundamentally far more effective to do it at the source so decentralized treatment is desirable and tailor-made units this is another uh, value offer that they have is that uh, <clears throat> You can uh, give them the sample of water that you have to treat and they're going to fine tune the electrical characteristics and the reactor design based on your water. They're not going to give you two, like of course from outside it will look the same but they will tu uh, tune it, fine tune it based on your requirements. So a pharmaceutical industry, their configuration will be different. Uh, clothing industry, will their configuration will be different. And this is another way where they can improve the yield. And uh, they have achieved 95%. So 90% is like almost sorted. And that's why I said you do not want to mix it. If you mix two, three uh, contaminated water source, now no matter what you do, the treatment won't be very effective. So you want to directly fire missile at the source. If you can get at the source, and if it's small enough, where, oh, it's a factory. It can handle a giant shipping container, not even a giant one, this is a small one. So it can handle a shipping container. We just put the shipping container, pipe the water in, get clean water out, have some sludge wastage, done. That's like shut up, take money. That's what they are focusing on. Then you can pay attention to it. It's very small. They are very particular about this um, gap. This whole idea of like having centralized uh, sewage treatment, it's not effective anymore. It does not scale up very well anymore. So they are solving that problem. So imagine it this way. Imagine every large apartment complex, imagine every large hotels, everything that is making way too much contaminated water, they have pre-treated water going to sewage. Now sewage plant can is like, I got this, I can handle this. So this is what Indra Waters are doing. This is what their USP is, clever USP. So have they had any success? Well, yes. Uh, they have actually deployed in uh, situ, as in like they have physically uh, deployed that puppy and it was working. For example, this is one 75 KLD. Uh, if you ever hear that KLD spectrum, that simply means kiloliters per day. So K is three zero, 75 uh, thousand, um, yeah, 75,000 liter per day sewage water treatment that they are doing. They have 50% cost reduction just because it's smaller and 75% uh, footprint reduction, like how much area it takes. They specifically fine tuned on that. Everything is designed and fine tuned to be as compact as possible. 75% sludge reduction because once you allow it to coagulate, it's super easy to sort. Then you have another even smaller variant that is 15 kiloliters uh, per day. This is wastewater treatment that allows for irrigation purposes. Of course, you're not uh, treating it to full, uh, what you call, uh, portable water level but you can do that like if you have another one or two stages you can reach what we call portable water level human safe drinking water can be achieved so that is up to you but generally they are focusing on taking very toxic water breaking it down so much that it's a natural ecosystem can like i got this so this is 15 they're also 40 percent cost reduction 75 foot protection benefit of small size 80 percent uh, 85 percent water recovery 65 percent sludge reduction and then you have sorry about that 15 kiloliters textile affluent this is what i was talking this is a jeans factory in bangalore so they make a jeans a lot of dye water and then they have to filter the water and then they use it in final uh, what you call uh, water rinsing so same water can be reused two times the benefit less water usage so this is what you want basically factory that is making the dirty water treating it on site it's cheaper for them it's cheaper for the machine it's uh, cost effective for the environment it's beneficial for our especially places that have expensive water so not only uh, they are like okay this is where i did my interview so not only they are like okay we have this idea no they have built it deployed it and they're working quite effectively as of now now <clears throat> And the core advantage is that they are dealing with forever chemicals. It's a very big deal in India, given the fact that our pharmaceutical industry is growing exponentially. We do not want to find ourselves exactly where China is right now, where they are contaminated the whole water ecosystem. So we have to be very mindful of this. And this sort of tool gives me hope that we can do it cost effectively also. So we have the and textile wastewater, that's desirable. I do not expect this to be low cost enough where it's like, okay, India can become the export hub. But if it's low enough where it's like, okay, all the import is goes away and all the national consumption becomes uh, less toxic to water 
I'm happy with that. I'm that's happy with that. And uh, they have also worked with hotels. Uh, basically, hotel takes the water, uh, go through this process, and they use it for flushing and water to uh, water cooling towers. So this is today. What I'm talking about, this is deployed working today. So it's a really clever way of taking a technology and miniaturizing it and deploying it where it makes the most sense. So everything about this company gives me a very good hope about India's startup ecosystem and given the fact that they have actually deployed it and got government approvals and a lot of international partners are also working on it. So they are making some good progress. So real world, like that's why they bring the physical thing. And this is the reactor SFR 2.0, it's not huge. Uh, of course, the electrode and how they are optimizing it. So those are special sources, but again, you have to give them your dirty water in order for them to make precisely tuned the system. And it does have a um, feedback loop. It does not tell like, okay, water is coming in. It's like water, temperature, pressure, pH level, electro, basically anything they can sense electrically, they sense it, that's how they fine tune it. So they have gotten some good success. So what are the challenges in front? Well, uh, challenges, they have made great progress. Let that be very clear. However, uh, our needs are growing way too fast. And that's the biggest problem with humanity. We expand ludicrously fast. So we need even lower cost. Like compared to anything else, this is free. But we want this to be actually free. As close to free as we can get it. Now, of course, you have to be reasonable. Like there is only certain X amount of money you can drop. Like it's shipping container is still huge. So uh, price, but it has to come down like uh, as much as they can or at least hope you uh, lock the price into the inflation adjusted, so to say. So that will allow them to have more decentralized deployment. And this is the most critical aspect. You do not want to contaminate so much that water is almost impossible to recycle. You want to make sure that sewage water is not lethal. It's less like dirty. So that's a very good approach of decentralize it actually makes sense. And they have received uh, like less than $1 for uh, one kiloliter uh, operation cost. So they have actually achieved it. It's uh, <clears throat> And that's why I said that this is very critical to directly go to the source. Very critical to do that. And if they can integrate this puppy with non-RO solutions. Now RO can take this water and give you a perfectly pure distilled water. But problem is RO waste way too much water. RO is like a best case scenario is like 50 to 60% water could be wasted. Like if you have double pressure recovery, the, yeah, then the energy consumption becomes huge. So you are still looking at very significant water wastage. And that kind of negates the point of recovering that much water here. So they would need some ultra filtration, uh, UV and ozone. Those steps can take care of uh, the major thing. Because again, this removes the naughty parts. So once you have a clean water, remove the heavy metals and naughty parts out of it. Use ozone to remove whatever minor things are there and sterilize the water. That I can see uh, making a very good sense. Especially as we come more and more water stress, having that uh, very high efficiency water recycling is far more desirable than like, oh, I have this stage that is awesome than RO stage that waste most of it. That's not really effective. So there are some challenges. They really have to like uh, stretch that. And again, for that, they can even develop the electrolysis stack where they're like, okay, the final stage of water purification is this, where we can like, you know, uh, control the TDH and remove the, all the naughty things that are still there, some naughty things. So there are some challenges, but I do wish them best of the luck. And they are going in the very right direction and they are doing a lot of uh, outreach projects and directly reaching where it matters the most, like apartment complex. So <clears throat> there's a very good chance if they keep growing at the current rate, a few years from now, you may have this uh, near to you. So this was my presentation on Indra Water. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please give the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.